last night was watch night service uh, in, in the Christian traditions. That's a very that's an African tradition and our ways of knowing that we created here. It was also a solidarity uh, moment that you saw January 1st, 1863, the Emancipation Proclamation went into effect. So people stayed up all night in the churches in Philly and New York and other places. They said, now the Africans have been freed by the paper and now we go get these guns and free ourselves. So you see them that are enjoying because the paper don't mean nothing unless we stick it on the end of this bayonet and kill everything moving with Confederate States of America. I remember um, William C. Nell, William Cooper Nell, who uh, a, a writer, a uh, scholar who in 1863 said, now January 1st has a different meaning because before January 1st in the South was considered among many of the enslaved the worst day of the year because January 1st was the day in, in, on many plantations where those who had us captive would decide which of us would be sold or rented out. So you might have your family broken up on January the 1st. And William C. Nell in one of those northern churches, I want to say it was New York, said that finally, perhaps now January 1st can lose the meaning that it has had before as we make this our Emancipation Day. So we talk about Juneteenth, but really Juneteenth is like uh, a child of January 1st. It's really about emancipation. They found out in some parts of Texas in June 1865, but... January 1st, 1863 was the date. It just happened to be June because that's how the army was moving. Hey, good morning. You ever wonder why people say whatever you're doing on January 1st, you'll be doing that for the rest of the year? Well, like most things in America, it has its origins in the enslavement of black people. You see, New Year's Day used to be known as Hiring Day. And on that day, enslaved black people spent New Year's Eve waiting, wondering, and watching to see if white enslavers were going to rent us out to someone else and split up our families. See, instead of selling us off, we were often traded like playing cards. And most debts were collected and settled on Hiring Day. And as part of the larger economic system, some enslaved Africans were put up for auction that day or held under contracts that started in January. These deals were conducted privately among white families, white friends, and white business contacts. And the enslaved who were traded were handed over in town squares on courthouse steps and sometimes just right there on the side of the road. These business transactions took place all year long, and contracts lasted for various lengths of time. And that's where the saying, what you do on New Year's Day will be what you're doing for the rest of the year comes from. Because you were leased out on January 1st, and whatever they hired you to do on January 1st, that's what you'll be doing for the rest of the year. But you don't have to take my word for it. Here's Lewis Clark, a formerly enslaved biracial man. And in 1842, he gave an account of what hiring day was like. He says, of all the days of the year, the slaves dreaded New Year's Day the worst of any. Here's Israel Campbell. And in 1861, he wrote this in his memoir. On New Year's Day, we went to the auctioneer's block to be hired to the highest bidder for one year. This was his third time on the auction block. This is Harriet Jacobs, the first black woman to write a slave narrative, wrote this in the Slaves New Year's Day chapter of her 1861 autobiography, Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl. She says, hiring day at the South takes place on the 1st of January. On the 2nd, the slaves are expected to go to their new masters. She wrote she would watch white enslavers and white farmers renting out black people for extra income during the period between cotton and corn harvest and the next planting season. She says from Christmas to New Year's Eve, many families would wait anxiously to find out whether or not they would be rented out and to whom. We'd be traded or sold down river to plantations in the South where brutality was the everyday treatment of black people. And on New Year's Day, at the appointed hour, the grounds are thronged with men and women and children waiting like criminals to hear their doom pronounced. She goes on to say that on one of these days, she saw a mother lead her seven children to the auction block. She knew that some of them would be taken from her, but they took them all. The slave trader who took the children wouldn't tell her where he was taking them because for him, it depended on where he could get the highest price. 
Jacobs said that she would never forget the mother crying out, Go! Oh, God! Why don't God kill me? Lord have mercy. Enslaved people who resisted going with their new white enslavers or fought back were whipped and thrown in jail until they submitted and promised not to run away from the new plantation. Jacobs even describes one white man trying to hire out a frail 70-year-old black woman because he was moving away and didn't want her anymore. Now, the history of New Year's Day is not a complete horror story, although a lot of horrific things happened. Pause to read. But the holiday was also associated with freedom. You see, a federal ban on the transatlantic slave trade went into effect on New Year's Day in 1804, just four years after Haiti successfully fought for and won their freedom. And black communities? Boy, they celebrated from 1808 to 1831. But the festivities were short-lived because, you know, white people. For example, on New Year's Eve in 1827, in New York City, a white mob attacked black folk who were in church. They vandalized the building and they did all this because we were celebrating the end of transatlantic slavery. And all of this happened after he signed a bill in April of 1862 that paid up to $300 for every enslaved person that was freed. Yes, white people got reparations for our freedom. And here we are 150 years later, and black churches still have New Year's Eve prayer services, and we still continue to pray for racial equality and equity.